So now we're going to be creating an effect for our um, character. The effect will be something like this. We'll just change it a little bit. This is an effect that I've already had. I had created a while ago. So I could easily start from uh, this instead of starting from scratch. If you don't know how to create a new Niagara system, just make sure you have a uh, folder for it. For me, it's called Particles. Right click uh, on a Niagara system and probably you can um, create an empty space or uh, a new system from a selected emitter. I would usually choose the fountain uh, just because it has all the basics that are pretty essential for creating a Niagara system. And then add it and just like that hit finish and rename it and open it up. The system I have right now is a GPU compute system. For it to be a GPU compute system, you need to have a fixed bounds. So make sure you click on this one. And maybe uh, if you want it to always move with the character, you probably need to have the local space uh, enabled as well. Then in the emitter state, I don't need it uh, to be scalable. You can though if you want it to be cold or uh, for performance uh, reasons. Maybe you want it to be cold in some way. Maybe you want uh, to scale the spawn count. I mean, that's completely up to you. But for me, I don't really need to do anything to it. So for me, it's, it's going to be called system. Loop duration is the default value because it's gonna always spawn everything uh, the spawn rate if you don't know how to add it if you uh, hit up this plus icon you have the spawn rate here um, for me it's gonna be uh, so right now I multiplied it by a float so if you type in float multiply float because I have a system set up, it's a graphical system, so if the uh, if the player's cell phone is not so good, they can just go ahead and um, set a lower value for their particle quality, and then therefore the particle count will be lower because this rate uh, variable is going to be lower. But at the end of the day, it's 5 multiplied by 20, so if I just make it 100 it's even more so maybe 30 is gonna be really really nice okay cool okay so now in the initialized particle I would like it to be something like this maybe with a little bit of more motion um, and maybe a little bit bigger probably that's gonna be nice uh, and for it to be spawned from a character, we need the skeletal mesh location. So type in skeletal mesh location, uh, and the preview would be this your skeletal mesh. For me, it's a metahuman skeletal mesh, and it's called this M underline med underline NRW underline body. Um, and for me, it's coming from the skeletal uh, from the skeletal mesh from the skeletons. Uh, the bones you can maybe use the triangles for me. It's worse. I need to use the uh, bones because it's only got hands and probably a little bit of the uh, Food probably it's not a complete skeleton mesh um, And that's it for the motion though. I'm using a curl noise force so if you type in curl noise force this is what you have and maybe I need more strength and more, more frequency maybe even more frequency maybe a thousand and gravity force is not what I want I, I don't like the gravity force uh, yeah, I only need the curl noise force, which is uh, looks pretty cool to my eyes. Uh, maybe some more strength. Um, 
and the sprite render is everything is automatic, the alignment is automatic, it's always facing the camera, which doesn't really matter. Um, so I believe it's a little bit too big, so maybe 1.5, 2.5 is a better idea. And the color, I want it to be completely random, um, random range, and um, Okay, so maybe a random range and a combination of blue and yellow would be nice or maybe the values between um, blue and red. Okay, so right now let's find it. So now I made a mistake. Um, the In the properties tab it shouldn't be set to local space. Uh, it just makes everything really bad and I have been using this particle uh, Niagara system and I had to duplicate it but I didn't so I'm doing it now um, so it's called character effect 1 this is the first uh, effect I'm going to be creating for the character um, so let's open that one up this is going to be coming here and let's reset this um, so for me I had an uh, had a gravity force it was going up I needed to be going a little bit high so random range vector probably um, something like a hundred a hundred and a hundred and minus hundred minus hundred and that's pretty, pretty much it. Um, this should be 150, 150, um, and the this one should be one and two, and this should be a direct set of probably something like this, because this is something I have been using for one of my levels in the game, and I don't really intend to change it too much. Okay. So the effect we're working on is this. Uh, so let's find it and add it to our mesh, which is here. Oh no, it's uh, effect that's a child of our mesh. Okay, this is the effect. Let's see how it looks inside the game. Um, it's a little bit too big, to be honest. Doesn't look good at all. It's like there are a lot of flies all over. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good at all. Okay, so um, the effect. It, it's gonna be. It's, it's definitely gonna be much smaller than that. Maybe 0.5 and 1. And. Let's see. Okay, it's definitely a better version. Maybe we can make them shine a little bit, or maybe we don't need to. But yeah, it will just freak out everything it will just mess up the whole screen so that's not um, that doesn't really worth it so I believe this is pretty cool it's not bad at all I like it um, I'll be adding a lot of effects because I'm having this new guy here selling you effects with the currencies you make inside the game this one right here um, and then I'm, I have to at create, at create at least three effects for it, for the shop to start working. And I'll gradually add more effects in time. Uh, if you're playing the game, I wish you a great time playing it. If you're a game developer, I wish you a great time developing your game and a great success for you all. And thank you.